Um, my name is Hannah and this is my podcast all about knitting and sometimes crochet and any other crafty things that I'm getting up to. <laughs> Thank you, Jonah. This is Jonah. He is attempting to be my co-host today. Um, he's nearly two years old and he's got a big personality. <laughs> Um, so I'm coming to you from Cheltenham in the UK, uh, which is where I live with Jonah and my other half, Jimmy, as well. I'm going to try and lie down. Don't fall off. <laughs> you know, I'm so antisocial. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry um, as Yarnia Designs. And you can also find all of my knitting patterns um, on Ravelry under Yarnia Designs too. Um, so, on to what I'm wearing. Um, today, I just wanted to cosy up in a bit of a, a blankety shawl, um, and this is my uh, Honey Dew shawl. Um, this is one of my designs, uh, which came out earlier this year, and you can sort of see it has this um, honeycomb texture in some of the sections. So yeah, I have shown this off more on some of the previous podcasts, but it's basically a giant triangular shawl. Sorry, <laughs> a giant triangular shawl. Yes, I know. Um, in a DK weight car. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the first time he's actually stayed up here. Um, when we've uh, podcasted and because um, he always tries to jump on my chair before we start so today I pulled up a chair next to me in the hope he might settle down oh no don't put your paws on it okay there you go so that's what I'm wearing um, and on to FO's uh, first, I might have a bit of my coffee. I'm back with a big mug of coffee today, which is really exciting. Oh, calm down, Jonah. <laughs> sort your ear out, but it's not a camera ready. Sorry, this is so chaotic. If you've, um, if this is your first time viewing um, my podcast, it's not normally quite this chaotic um, and you're probably wondering what on earth is this woman doing with this dog talking about knitting but if you're a returning viewer <laughs> you probably am used to some of Jonah's shenanigans so uh, yeah it's just how it is today <laughs>
Okay, so I might need a bit of space for this bit, Jonah. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, I had to get Jonah down because he was just a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, when he sits next to you, he sits very close and uh, doesn't really understand personal space. But he's comfortable in his bed now. He's staring at me and yawning in protest of this. But yeah, on to FOs. I've got two FOs to show you today, which is so exciting. I don't, I feel like I've not had any FOs for a while. I'm probably wrong, because I can't even remember what I showed my own podcasts, but here we go. Anyway, um, the first FO I'm going to show you is uh, the shawl design, which I've been working on, and I've been showing you bits of the last couple of episodes. So without further ado, this is the Solcum shawl. Ta -da! So, I'm so excited that I have now finished this. It's so exciting. <gasps> Look at it! It is so huge. I mean, it's, it's not a hugely deep shawl, but it's very, very long, um, which I wanted so that you can sort of wrap it loosely around um, I just really love that shape of shawl, um, so I thought I would, I would design one. Um, so it's a crescent shaped shawl, um, where you, you've got these, uh, garter sections with eyelets and then a couple of little lace sections before at the end having this bigger lace section, which I really, really love. Can you see? it sort of um, finishes in this wavy, sort of a wavy line. Um, makes sense. So yeah, sorry, a wavy edge. That's, that's the word I was looking for, a wavy edge there. So if I just tell you the colours that I've used, sorry, the yarns that I've used, the lighter colour um, is Hedgehog Fibres in their merino singles in the typewriter colorway. And then the, this, oops, it's just so big. <laughs> this um, sort of speckled, variegated, minty green um, is Labian Ame, and that's in their merino singles in the Life Aquatic colorway. Now, I haven't woven in my ends yet, that's just because I'm lazy. I have blocked it. I blocked it before weaving in my ends, which is not what you're supposed to do, but clearly I just play by my own rules. So. Um, but yeah, this is now in testing, so the pattern is not available yet. Um, it's just been released to testers yesterday, um, so they're just getting their yarns organised and then they'll be getting going on that. So I'm hoping... I don't know how long it's going to take them to knit. Possibly around a month, I would estimate. But I've not given them a strict deadline for this. Um, so, yeah, I, I just really, really love it. I just love how light and airy it is. And I love the yarn that I've used as well. Um, it's really, really soft. And um, I really enjoyed using um, single ply again, I, which I don't think I'd used for a while, not fingering weight anyway. So I um, really enjoyed knitting it. Um, and yeah, there'll be more on that soon um, when I have a release date organised. So uh, yeah. Mm. It's getting blown out quite a bit. There we go. Yeah, so um, I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'm not letting myself wear it yet. Um, I won't be wearing it until, at least until we've taken the pattern photos, which we haven't done yet. 
Um, and then I, I will probably wait until the pattern's released, just in case we needed to take more photos or anything to keep it in good condition. So, uh, let's put up my mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the first FO. Um, it did take me quite a while to do, but I think because of ripping, when I'm designing, you sort of need to try something and see how it'll work, and then sometimes it doesn't work out exactly how you want it, so you have to rip back and try again. And there was a bit of that going back and forth, so it takes longer than just knitting it um, on its own, like with a pattern already written there, so. Yeah, I feel um, really happy with um, the finished design, so I hope you guys like it too. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can release it uh, while, well, I was going to say while the weather's still warm, but today it is so not like summer. I think, is this the last day of May? How many days are in May? You, sorry, Jonah's just lying underneath my chair, chewing on one of his squeaky... Well, it's one of his squeaky toys, but the squeaker broke ages ago, so it's just... It just makes a funny noise. I hope you can't hear it too much. Sorry. But it's better than him climbing on me, which he was doing before. So... Yeah, I think I lost my train of thought. Yeah, it's really rainy today. Weather update. Might put that across the screen because that sounds... Maybe that could be a segment. Mm. Weather update. Mm. Uh, yeah, today it is... It's been torrential rain this morning. Um, I don't think it's that cold out, but it's sort of that humid, muggy weather where it's so grey and cloudy and... Yeah, it feels like ages since I've been able to sit outside and knit, which is one of my favourite things to do. But hopefully we'll get some more sun later in the year. Because this whole week um, where I live has just been like this, just cloudy and rainy. But where my mum and dad live, which is only about two and a half hours away, they've had sunshine and barbecues. I don't know how they've managed that. So, I think it's very unfair. Mum, when you watch this, can you please send some of the sunshine my way? Because I think you've stolen it all. <laughs> I think my mum my mom does watch the podcast, <laughs> which is really nice. She's a knitter too, so um, yeah. She's actually one of the people who's going to be testing my shawl. So, uh, yeah. Right. Sorry, enough waffling, and onto the second defo that I've got to show you. And this is my pair of holy socks. So, if I just show you one up close. So, here we go. So, these are a free pattern on Ravelry. It's one of my own designs, but it is a free pattern. Um, and I designed it in the beginning of the year, this year. Um, I think in January I was designing it, and um, sort of decided I wanted a wanted to design a pattern that people could use for any variegated yarns. So as you can see, this is heavily speckled, and variegated, and um, I designed it initially as a toe up pattern, but then this sock. Um, this pair of socks, I designed um, the cuff down version, so it's available with both sets of instructions now, free on Ravelry. So uh, if you're interested, go check it out. It's sort of got these garter ridges um, most of the way along the sock, you can see here. 
and it's a uh, heel flap and gusset, which is my favourite um, type of heel to use. I feel that uh, fits best for my foot. I think a lot of people feel the same. And then it's got this waffly section just near the toe, and then another waffly section up near the cuff as well. So, yeah. Um, oh, the yarn I used for this one um, is Junk Yarn in the Ray colorway, spelled R-E-Y. I think she is a character out of Star Wars. So, uh, yeah, these took me a very long time to knit because I knit one and a half socks and then I forgot that I was knitting them because um, I think I just had a bit of a tidy up and put them away somewhere um, because they weren't really a priority at the time. And um, I think that was when I had lots of baby knits to do. So I was sort of trying to focus more on those. And then I completely forgot that I was working on them and uh, found them again. And I was like, oh, why didn't I finish these? So now I'm so excited that I can wear them because they're so sparkly as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see how sparkly they are. I don't know. Sometimes it's difficult to see when I'm filming on the camera, but then it shows up later on. I don't know. But this colourway is just beautiful. I love it. So yeah, another pair of socks. Woo! So yeah, socks done. And then I've got a couple of whips to show you. Um, I've not got everything that I'm working on because a couple of things um, I haven't made that much progress on um, over the last... Has it been like a week and a half, two weeks since I podcast? remember. But I've only got two whips that I'm going to show you. And I might show you my crochet blanket as well, depending on how long um, this episode's going to be by the time I've got through everything else. Um, so I won't be showing you my Rick and Morty socks because I have, that's the stripy, self-striping socks um, that I'm knitting, just vanilla. And um, I've not even managed one stripe since I last showed them to you, so there's really no point showing them. Um, and then I'm not going to be showing you the Weasley sweater that I'm knitting for my sister because um, I'm still just on the yoke increases and it's just plain stockinette so, and I've not done that much, I think I've maybe done a couple of inches, so it's not that much progress, so I don't feel like it's enough to show you, but I'll show you at some point soon, once I've got enough progress. Or I feel like it's worth showing it off to you again. Okay, so first whip I'm going to show you. I need to properly talk about project bags because <laughs> um, I think sometimes I talk about some of the ones that I show and then I've realised I forget to talk as much about the other ones. I've shown this loads on the podcast, um, my llama project bag from a homespun house. It's my biggest project bag that I have, so it's got my biggest project in it at the moment. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because there's loads of birds have just landed on the fence outside. And there's loads of them. They're making quite a bit of noise as well. And some of them look really fluffy and young. So cute. Sorry. Wildlife update. <laughs> anyway, living in this bag is my Portage cardigan, which I've made probably a couple of inches of progress on. Um, yeah, I've maybe done maybe three inches of progress on this. So if I show you the front, oh, it's not really the front. I can't really show you the front because it's. It's this stockinette bit, but it curls up at the moment because I, I think it does that until you then put the edge um, along. It's not a button band because there's no buttons, but there's like this bit where you, I think you then pick up and do an edge around the collar and edge of the cardigan. But I'll show you back. So this little marker is where I was last time. On top of yeah just there so i've done a fair amount i think it's been quite a few hours of work 
So um, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. And um, I'm really loving it. It is slow going. Um, I feel like I'm ready to get to the next section of the cardigan because all of these cables are quite time consuming. I am doing it without a cable needle. It just feels like it's um, never ending cables and I'm stuck in a some sort of loop at the moment. So I really would like to feel like I'm making more progress on it. I can't remember how long the body has to be. I'm sure it's going to be like down here. I'm probably only about halfway through from this, the armholes, I reckon, because it is quite a long cardigan. Maybe, maybe down to here. Go, maybe the cables go about down to there-ish. I reckon, because it is a it is a long cardigan. But I'm absolutely loving the way it's knitting up, and I'm really enjoying working with this yarn as well. The yarn is um, Primrose Yarn Co. I'll show you the ball um, without the dog here. <laughs> So yeah, the yarn is um, Primrose Yarn Co. in their Jasper DK base in the Bramble colourway. I absolutely love it. It's so squishy and um, it just feels like quite bouncy as well. Like, I don't really know the, the proper terminology, but it's squishy and bouncy and it's really fun to work with. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's not splitty yarn either, which is really nice. Because uh, I'm I'm using higher higher sharps. I don't know if you can see. It's going to be a bit too difficult to show you. But yeah, I'm using higher higher sharps, which are my favourite needles to use. Um, and they're not so great with splitty yarns. And this is not a splitty yarn at all. I would completely recommend this. Absolutely gorgeous. I just love. Show you again. The little speckly bit. gorgeous gorgeous yarn and uh, I can't wait to wear this when it's finished I am I am enjoying the process but I also really want to wear the finished product so uh, yeah anyway that's the Portage cardigan uh, I think it was by Dandelion Girl Designs um, that pattern and next whip is a new whip that you won't have seen before unless you follow me on Instagram. But I don't think I've shown that much of it. I only showed the very start. Oh, better show you the project bag. This is my gorgeous project bag from Emerald Fibres. And um, it's got a little printed novel on it. It's so cute. I love it. And I've got some cute pins on here too. I don't know if you'd be able to read them. Yeah. Um, really love this bag. And I'd really love to get another one. She does um, loads with embroidery on now as well. Um, I think I got this last year when she was sort of specialising in printed bags, but now she's doing lots of embroidery and it looks so pretty. Um, so yeah, you should definitely go and check out her shop. She's based in Ireland, I think. Yeah. So living in here is a new project, which is going to be a t-shirt. Now I've got the new issue of Pom Pom Quarterly here um, and literally the day it arrived I had a flick through and I immediately decided I needed to cast on this pattern. Let me just find it for you so I can show you. I'll show you some of the other ones a bit later, but um, this one is the Riley t-shirt. I think it's a, pass a pattern by Amy Christoffers. I absolutely love it. I'll show you some of the other pictures. So it's a V-neck um, sort of loose fitting t-shirt. Um, some more pictures there. It's gorgeous. So it's 
I don't know if you can tell, it's got these sort of little micro stripes. The whole thing is little micro stripes. Um, and it's meant to be knit in a sport weight yarn, I believe. Let me just check. Um, yeah, it's meant to be, you, you're meant to use a sport weight yarn. And you're supposed to use, for the smallest size, which is what I was going to do because it's quite a boxy um, t-shirt, you need 150 grams of each colour. And it doesn't say exactly how many yards you end up using out of that. But I decided I wanted to cast it on immediately and I thought I could just use um, 100 grams each um, of a fingering weight skein, like a hand dyed from my stash. So I, I went stash diving and what I picked out was this gorgeous skein of wool and vine yarns. Um, and this is on, I think it's her blitzed base. I think it's called the, um, it's the one with Stellina. I think it's, is it gold Stellina in this one? I think it's gold Stellina. And this is her dirty on purpose colorway. And, um, it's just beautiful. It's like the whole skein just shimmers and sparkles. It's just gorgeous. I love it. Um, so yeah, there is that colour. And then the other colour, which I thought would go really nicely, is a skein of beehive yarns. I think this was a new acquisition last week, where I thought it would be a pair of socks. And it's actually turning into a t-shirt, which I'm really excited about. Um, so this is Beehive Yarns. I can't remember if it's her Barbarella or Bardo base. It's the High Twist um, Merino Nylon base, the High Twist one. Because so I think that's the base I've ordered from her before and I really, really loved working with it. So, and it's the Rose Lichen colorway. She's just gorgeous. Absolutely love it. So these two together look like a bit like this. I just thought it look super pretty. So yeah, those are the two colours. And then this is what I've done so far. Now this t-shirt, it's, it's not going to look like a t-shirt when I show it to you yet because it's a really interesting construction. I don't want to give too much away, but it's a bit of a modular construction. I think a bit like, they've likened it to, in their description, to um, a log cabin blanket, if you've seen one of those, where you pick up along edges and add bits on. So this is my progress so far, and I believe this is the back panel that I'm working on. So, ooh. If you can see, all the stripes. Isn't it just gorgeous? I just love how it's working up with these two colourways, and I'm really pleased with the choices I made. I just hope that I'm going to have enough yarn. That's my only concern. Um, but I thought with the pattern, sorry, with the t-shirt, because there's a lot of extra ease, I might be able to just shorten the side sections a bit and bring them in so that it's slightly less boxy than in the picture. Um, so I'm just hoping that will work because I've, I've got the gauge on this. I did do a little swatch and as I'm knitting it up I'm, I'm stretching it out a little bit and then double checking that my gauge is correct. Um, so I'm hoping that I might be able to get enough out of this. My backup plan if I'm really struggling is I'll probably need to order another skein of um, Rose Lich and by Beehive Yarns. Um, because it's I think it's going to be pretty much impossible to get a new, another skein of Bull and Vine. 
because her updates sell out so fast. So that's not really a valid option, <laughs> a backup option. Um, so if I need to, I will just have to probably order another skein of um, the Beehive Yarns, which I'd really love to do anyway because I love the colourway so much and I just want to knit everything in it. <laughs> so it definitely would not be wasted, if, even if I only just used a little bit of it. So let me know what you think. Do you think I'm being completely silly um, trying to knit a sport weight t-shirt using, which is, should use 300 grams of yarn with just 200 grams of fingering weight yarn. I'm not sure. I just wish, I wish the pattern had said exactly how many yards they used. I don't know. I don't know if that would make a difference or not. I think in theory it could work because it's so modular um, once I've done the front and back panels I think it would be easier to shorten the sides in a bit so we'll just have to see keep your fingers crossed for me but I am in love with how it's working up oh and I'm also using this little progress keeper um, which is from where's it from where is it actually from? I think it's from Frosted Betty's or Sugar Tots. Sorry, the shop is called Sugar Tots and I think um, she's called Frosted Betty's on Instagram. So, yay! Look at it. So yeah, that's my last wick. Really, really loving it. This is just so fun and relaxing because it's just garter going back and forth. Um, and then you pick up for another section and it's more garter. <laughs> Sorry, that's Jonah wriggling around <laughs> under the table. But yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying the garter. It's really relaxing and I love how squishy it is. So, I was going to show you um, the other things in Pom Pom Quarterly that I really, really love. Um, they've got loads of... Um, Sort of garments and shawls with micro stripes um, for their summer edition. I'll just show you some of my favourites. Uh, it's not that one. I mean, they're all gorgeous, but I really love this um, vest top. I think it's patterned by. It's called Tarmac and it's by Anna Maltz. So I just really, really love that. I don't know what sort of yarn that uses. Let's have a look. Because that's another thing I could have probably done with this yarn. Um, yeah, it uses fingering weight yarn, so I could e you could easily do that with two um, skeins of 100 gram skeins of fingering weight yarn. I think the first four sizes only use um, two skeins, so yeah, definitely. Um, then I think that was my second favourite pattern. And then I also really love um, a shawl by Suzanne Sommer, and I think it's called Macklin, the Macklin shawl. So pretty. Look at all that brioche. It uses so much yarn now. I just don't know if we could dedicate that much of my yarn to one project. Yeah, I can't remember how much it uses. Yeah, it uses about six skeins of Madeleine Tosh Merino Light. So six fingering white skeins. That one takes a lot to knit as well. <laughs> oh, 
out. And there's another t-shirt I really, really love. This one. I just love that motif on the front. And that is the, is it the Laden by Natalie Sells. Natalie Sellers? Selling? I don't know. I'm not very good at pronouncing things. So sorry. But it's gorgeous. So yeah, that's that. Um, the only other thing that I might have, I possibly want to show you is my crochet granny stripe blanket because I think the last time I showed it was episode three, which would have been back in December, I think, or January. I can't remember, but um, I've done quite a few stripes since then and it, I've really been enjoying working on it recently. I work on it a lot in bed um, just at the end of the day because it's just mindless and it's just so comforting to work on that um, and you can just see the stripes work up so I'll show you it in a little second. So it's living in this giant tote bag from Loop in London, um, which I got when I bought way too much yarn once. <laughs> um, the only time I've ever been there. So it was with a with, uh, good reason that I bought so much yarn because I, I never really get to go to yarn shops. But yeah, the, it's just full of all of my scraps and uh, mini skeins just all of my leftovers from projects. Most of them live in there. So if I just, I'm halfway through a row, but the rows on this thing are insanely long. So I'm, I'm not gonna, it's not even gonna matter that I can't hold up. Um, I can only hold up about half of it anyway, cause it's so long. So this is what we've got so far. And I think, the last time I showed it, the last time I showed it to you, I had only just done this pink. Oh, that's not right. I'll show you closer. I had only just done this one here. So since then, I've done all of these. Ooh, so that's quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you want me to talk through what every single color is. Um, I'll I'll talk you through some. If I can remember. So I think this one here, the light one there, is Sushi uh, by Fine Fish. Um, then we've got Beehive Yarns with this the green and the purple here. Um, and that's in the Take the A Train colorway. Then we've got Moonflower Yarns, which is the black, pink and orange here. Um, and that is, what's that colourway? I can't remember the colourway name. I think when I first got it, it didn't have a name, but um, I'm sure if you contact her, she can tell you. <laughs> um, and then after that, we've got Nomadic Yarns. It was a self-striping, so it's actually this mustard and the purple and everything in between. Um, and that's the Molly Weasley self-striping colourway. And then this purple, I think, was a mini skein from... Oh. I can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember that one. It was a mini skein. And this crazy blue one here um, is the leftovers from my Galactic Rainbow Shawl. Um, and this is their... It's Leon Alexander Yarns, and it's in the City of Lights colour, colourway there. Um, and then, after that, there's like a, a little bit of a row just above it, which is this dark bit here, and that is Hey J Yarn, and I don't know what the colourway name is. Sorry for that one, I'm not sure, but it's really cool, and I like it. And then this one that I'm just on at the moment is it's definitely a Nora George mini skein. I'm not sure if it might be Castle on the Hill, possibly. I'm not entirely sure on that one. 
but yeah. Um, so a couple of my mini skeins, a lot of them are leftovers from my previous projects, but I think you can probably see I've been trying to fade them a bit more. I think I saw on um, the Little Tailoress and her podcast a while ago, um, I think she's now called, but she's now rebranded um, her yarn company to Dandelion and Dogwood, um, which is an amazing name. I love it. And I love all, all of her new website and everything. It looks gorgeous. Um, but anyway, I think her podcast is still called The Little Tailoress for the moment. Um, and I noticed, I, I know she mentioned when she was talking about her granny stripe blanket, she wanted hers to be a bit of a fade, um, which I thought was such a cool idea. Um, but I've decided partway through doing mine to then implement that. <laughs> mine is a bit of a, a crazy mishmash at the start. But then I think it does sort of, the colours do sort of fade into one another a little bit. I've tried to um, make sure when I've been picking a new colour to add in that it at least has one of the colours from the previous yarn in it, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Anyway, just really, really relaxing and fun to work on. And I, I'm just really loving how it's working up. I love that it, it sort of, it'll end up representing all of my previous projects, everything that I've spent time working on, um, including gift knits as well. So I don't know, I think it's just a really, really lovely thing to have. And I love that you can now fold it over like this because it's, it's a really long blanket. I've made ours particularly ridiculous. Um, so it takes me probably about half an hour to do one row of crochet. Um, on it because it's as long as our no, it's long wider it'll be wider than our king size bed so it's ridiculous but I, I wanted it to be a big one and it'll keep me going for years and years and years <laughs> so yeah um been really enjoying that um I hope you've all been enjoying the projects that you're working on um I'd be interested to know if you're knitting um, or making anything the same which I'm, I'm also making um, yeah I really hope you've uh, had a lovely couple of weeks since I last spoke to you and I hope you have another lovely nitty crafty couple of weeks uh, till my next podcast um, yeah I don't think I've got anything else left to update you with so um, I'll just leave it there so I hope you have a lovely couple of weeks and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.